Ministry for um, sponsoring this session. Um, and I think we're ready to go back there now. So we're good. Um, okay, so I'm going to get up the, the last panel, which is uh, the fresh market equipment and supply discussion. Um, we've already done the audience survey, so that's not going to be part of it. So if I can have um, Tia Ross from NatureWorks and then Jeff Marks from WaterTech and Leighton Overson from CHS Northwest to come up and sit up on the panel. You guys each have a microphone um, because this is being also teleported to Prosser and, and WSU Vancouver folks there. So I want, I would, it'd be great if each of you guys could kind of go down the line and um, give us an overview of what your company has to offer fresh market production. Um, and then we'll have some interaction here. I've got a couple other questions to add to that with, you know, filling in the blanks. And you guys are all kind of in a different part of the uh, segments for production. So um, kind of, you may as well each tell your own story here. Uh, Leighton, do you want to start off? Sure. Uh, okay. So my name is Leighton Overston. I am an agronomist for CHS Northwest, and we are a uh, local co-op, um, basically providing um, nutrient management uh, advice, um, supplying chemicals, fertilizers, liquid fertilizers. Um, we consult for disease management, insect management. Um, so uh, we basically cover the areas. Uh, we're primar primarily uh, in Whatcom County, but we also do Skagit County, and then we do some in Snohomish, uh, basically anywhere down the, up and down the I-5 corridor, and then we do ha uh, do a little bit of work uh, in Benton County uh, as well. Um, so we supply chemicals, fertilizer, we'll also do custom applications um, for uh, strawberries, basically uh, pre-emergent. Uh, we'll also do pre-broadcast before uh, site prep, um, and then we'll basically work with growers based on what their markets are and, and uh, you know, what their end result is, helping manage uh, MRLs and uh, other things like that as well. Hi there, and I'm Tia Ross, and the company is NatureWorks, and we provide the fresh strawberry market with packaging. And our emphasis is on helping make environmentally sound decisions, which gets a little complicated at times, because at the end of the day, it's still packaging. Um, and we are open and available during season 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we try to adapt to what the farm or the processor needs rather than us trying to tell them how they should do it. But we also want to hopefully be consultants and be able to help them make good decisions for them. Um, they don't always, someone doesn't always know what's out there and what's available or that there might not be another better way for them to do something. And so we're almost like part of their, almost like their employee and looking out for their best interest. Okay. Let's see, yes, this works. Uh, my name is Jeff Marks. I'm an irrigation designer at WaterTech here in Linden. Uh, we carry basically anything irrigation related, pipe, drip tape, pumps. Uh, we sell a line of mulch laying equipment and bed shapers for strawberries as well as vegetables. Um, we sell plastic mulch, biodegradable and conventional, and we sell spraying equipment as well, air assisted boom sprayers, kind of various spraying um, parts. We, our territory for our office in Linden is basically west of the Cascades all the way to the Oregon border. We also have an office in Langley, British Columbia, as well as an office way up in the interior of BC. Um, so usually we help you with your irrigation start to finish and 
yeah, that's pretty much what we did. Um, I know Leighton and uh, Jeff already answered this, but maybe Tia, you could uh, chime in on uh, where your company reach is, um, particularly in Washington, if you work only in specific regions. Um, we uh, actually sell in Northern California some, all of Oregon, all of Washington, and some of, some of British Columbia. Okay, so you're kind of across the, yes. the map there, Pacific Northwest. Um, all right, so um, let's see here. Where, like, how can we, how can growers or other industry find, um, you know, information on prices or company details that they would need that would um, be beneficial to their business um, kind of going forward? I know, I assume you guys each have websites, but are there other ways or employees that you guys have, coworkers, I guess? Um, so, the easiest way to find us, yeah, obviously we have a website. We're, we're, we're really, we only have this office here in Whatcom County. Um, but uh, a lot of our agronomists and field staff are uh, involved in a lot of the other aspects of uh, agriculture, um, dealing with research, uh, variety stuff. Um, so, I mean, we're around, we're usually at conferences. Um, so, I mean, just usually word of mouth or business cards, um, you know, and, and, and our involvement in the industry. Um, so it's it's not really hard to find us. So, uh, and I mean, yeah, it, 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 and anytime you want to consult or, you know, we can sit down and, and discuss uh, options. Um, obviously we're limited being in Washington, especially with our, our, our friends to the North on, on what we can do. Um, just because there, there are laws um, preventing us, you know, to working up there, but we can always talk and discuss and, and keep a conversation going uh, in, in, in what markets we can try to, you know, best utilize for that grower. So. And for us, I would say we try to be involved with and sponsor a lot of the industries that our customers are involved in, whether it be meetings or um, events. I think that was probably mostly how we do outreach for us. Um, we have, one, two, there's three of us that are covering the area, but I'm usually the large and in charge, kind of the line person. Um, for us, our website has a fair bit of what we do on it, but there are a lot of products that are either not fully listed or aren't listed just because of how many things we deal with. Um, so usually your best bet is to call in and just basically ask for what you're, what you're looking for and we can tell you yep we can help you yes we have in stock or we can order it for you or we don't deal with that um pricing wise because the market's all over the place it's kind of a basically let us know what you need and we'll get you a price on it and we'll we'll take it from there obviously if anybody else has any other questions raise your hand we've got a extra microphone around um but uh see so can you, do you guys predominantly just sell, um, what is one of the main kind of product sectors that you are selling? Um, do you guys rent anything out or have any like equipment maintenance sections of your businesses? I mean, obviously it's not going to apply to everybody, but answer as you're able to. Um, so, I mean, we will provide, um, Equipment locally, uh, mostly in in uh, Whatcom, Skagit, and Snohomish County. Um, you know, we do do a lot of liquid tank uh, deliveries and and stuff like that. So there are some things we'll do. Typically, our berry spreaders won't won't really work for strawberries, but uh, our liquid market um, we can we can help quite a bit on that. Um, you know, I think I think more for us, it's it's a it's a knowledge based. Um, you know, not so much what we're selling, but we, what we can provide and how we can service the grower, and in making the grower successful based on on what you know their expectations are, and what they're trying to achieve. So that's our main goal, um, is to make the grower successful, because um, we 
we obviously want a returning customer and if they're not successful there's no way that we can be successful so uh so a lot of the thing we're just basically trying to provide knowledge and direction uh to the grower and, and helping them succeed and for us, I would say, you know, if there was some mention of like a price list or something like that. Um, what customers need varies greatly, which seems strange because you would think that everything was pretty standard. But um, one of the things that we hope we can do is try to make it um, individual for the grower, packer, shipper. And so that's going to vary and it's going to make cost vary. And um, we, as far as equipment goes, there are, for instance, box machines available. Um, that depends on what they're doing, how they're doing it, how much they're doing of it. Uh, some people love having them, some people not so much. And we'll make them in-house and even ship them already made. Some still like to hold by hand. Um, but there are options and that's where the consulting comes in is what the customer goal is so we can be a team um in terms of equipment that we rent or sell i'm primarily for the strawberry market would be uh, rain flow transplanters or bed shapers and usually we have a couple in stock that sometimes we'll rent them out sometimes people buy them um, if we don't have any to, to rent we have a number of growers who have them that go hey i'm not using it you want to rent it? Great. No problem. Um, in terms of, you know, specifically what we deal with, um, in terms uh, for irrigation, it's really basically start to finish. We really just need people to come to us with, you know, hey, I've got X many acres. I got this for water. You know, what do we need to do for it? And from there, we can pretty much take it start to finish. There's not a specific thing that we really dive into. It's more of just the broad scope of irrigation. We can say, okay, we can make recommendations on drip tape, you know, plastic mulch that you can use in there, piping systems, everything for, for growing out there. Okay, cool. Um, can you guys tell me what the benefit of working with you uh, would be versus a company not located in the Pacific Northwest? Like what, what edge do you have on the, uh, this Pacific Northwest market? Uh, I mean, basically understanding the market and, and understanding, um, you know, how things um, react in our areas, um, you know, which varieties will do well, which won't, um, you know, just through a lot of trial and error and, and, and being involved with uh, other people's operations and just, um, you know, just having that history of understanding, um, you know, what we've been trying to do and how the markets are shifting or, or what we're trying to do and uh, the changes in, in, in the government bodies and uh, the regulations and, and stuff like that as well. We can, we can kind of understand all of that, uh, how our soils work, how our water, um, you know how that's all affecting the crops and our plants in our area. Uh, what what our disease pressures, what our insect pressures are, uh, the different weeds types. Um, you know, uh, having that research base. Uh, for us, there are things that I think being out of the scope of just Pacific Northwest helps because California does kind of drive things at times, and at least to be able to bring that to explain what's going on, um, you know, and then certainly it's the grower, shipper, packers option, but at least making it, them aware, that's helpful. But I also think that it is important to deal with someone locally because things do, you need to be able to respond quickly and you need to be able to make sure that, to me, the packaging should be the last thing they're worried about. It's not, someone's full-time job to have it, but it's necessary for them to get their product out the door. That should be on us. Um, I mean, really when it comes to irrigation products, there are some products you can buy online, save some money, ship them. But a lot of times having someone local that you can go into the store and say, hey, I bought this from you. 
you know, how do I set it up? How do I do this? This isn't quite working right. Or, you know, I just need some good advice. It's nice to be able to go to a local place that's there. I've had some growers go, you know, it's great. I can buy it online, but if I have a problem, no one can show up on my farm. No one's going to come by and say, oh no, this is what you got to do to fix that. And being local, you're able to go out and see what's going on. You know, I'm sure same thing for Layton. You can go out to the farm and look and go, okay, this is what's going on with it. Not, uh, you know, sorry, you bought it online. Good luck. It's, you know, there's someone local that can help you with that. Okay. So, um, from a timeline perspective, um, what, what should, what do you think is important to tell um, the industry or what should they be aware of when inquiring about products or services that they need, need to order? I mean, are there certain timelines that take longer or do you usually have certain things in stock? Um, and kind of, you know, I know a lot of you guys have many different products, so it really all depends, but we perhaps give a general range of things that would be applicable to strawberry production. Uh, so timing wise for us, um, you know, we have the infrastructure that, uh, you know, we're, we're fortunate to be able to carry a lot of things in stock, uh, or have the resources to have them, uh, just a few days away. Um, typically for us, um, you know, the winter time is the best time to start making decisions, uh, or even at the end of the summer. Uh, making decisions on, on what you're trying to do or, or uh, um, you know, what, what direction you're trying to head or what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, during the spring, um, you know, we, we service over 300 growers in our region. So uh, there's only six of us. So we're, we're, we're never really in the office during the spring. So, uh, and we're working six or seven days a week. So, um, I mean, we will be available and we are uh, around and then, you know, we do have an office and there is office staff there full time. Um, but uh, usually it, it's a little harder to get us or nail us down during the growing season um, until about the mid of July. Um, so, yeah, the sooner the better. Uh, for us, we try to keep generic items on the floor at all times so that push comes to shove, there's something to use on custom printed items, depending on whether it's an existing product or not. Um, but from inception, like something brand new, within a couple of weeks, and we do have people in house that can work on design and also design on labels, we can do that all in house and really quickly. We produced um, labels and that go on clamshells within 48 hours from not our preference, but our job is to make sure it happens. And that's so that we can make it happen. Um, when it comes to equipment, usually that's the longer lead time because it usually is built at the factory and then shipped. And those can have a lead time of anywhere from six to eight weeks. So equipment wise, it's sooner is always better in terms of just basic irrigation, like drip tape, pipe and plastic mulch. A lot of that we usually have in stock, but again, sooner is always better just because you know, you'll get a season where all of a sudden one grower triples his acreage and now everything that you brought in is out of stock and now we got to wait for it to show up. So usually sooner is better, but for the more common products, they're always on the shelf. So we can usually supply you within a day or two if, if it comes to it. I, I know at this point with the strawberry uh, industry, transitioning more to fresh market it seems like what we're dealing with is a lot of smaller growers and a fair amount of new growers uh, but i know you guys are really used to usually tm maybe not so much you you've dealt with smaller growers with what you do a fair amount but you are the guys that are in most of your income comes from these large guys so what are you doing or how, what's your policy about dealing with small customers that might not be as valuable to your business as your larger standard folks? That's, that's an interesting question. So 
you know, we, we try not to perceive that any, any grower is, is more important than any other grower. You know what I mean? But I mean, they're, the, the larger, I and mean, I'm only speaking on, on, in my, my industry, but, um, you know, the 10% of the smaller growers usually take up 90% of your time. So those are the guys who are, are constantly calling, asking questions. Um, you know, they, Hey, I've got two yellow plants out in my field. Can you come take a look at them? You know, that kind of thing. But you know, we, it, it, it's all the community you, know, you want everybody to be successful. So you give, you give time, uh, you give enough time to everybody. Um, you know, just because you don't buy enough or you don't meet a certain quota. I mean, that's, I've never been, I'm, I'm more there trying to educate people than trying to make sales. Sales just come with, with the advice, you know, cause they're going to have to do it anyway. Um, so it, it, it's just trying to educate people. And if you can make them more successful, I mean, you, you're trying to give them the, the, the knowledge and the skills so that they can be able to make their own decisions as well. So, and whether it's pointing them in the, in, in the, the right direction of certain resources or people to talk to as well. Um, you know, we're, we're all just trying to educate each other, you know? So I think, I think in that, in that respect, you know, you always, you always have to deal with people on an equal basis. Um, you know, you may not be able to get to them because you've got less acreage to cover. Um, but you always try to make time to stop and talk to them because they're trying to make a living and they're trying to be successful. And so you have to respect that and you have to take that, you know, just because, you know, maybe they're not, you know, buying, you know, such and such amount. It, it, it's never really been about that. So, um, you know, you're, you're trying to give everybody their due respect and, and, and definitely, and, and, and those people are usually the most eager and, you know, and they're the ones doing the research and they're in there and they have come up with all these outside information. Um, and so, and for me, so some of those challenges are, are some of the best to deal with. So. Even though you said it wasn't important for me to say anything, I'm going to say something. Yeah, I just mean that you're used to dealing with smaller well, fresh and markets. And it's actually probably the most fun of anything that we do is when someone has really no packaging and they need help and you can help them be successful. You know, brand identity, have you ever thought of all of those things? And that's where it's amazing. And small people can become bigger people if you're part of the team and you help them get their thing done. Um, yeah, to me, it's the most fun by far. Yeah, we, I, we really try our best to help everyone out regardless of if they spend 500 bucks or $500,000 with us. Cause I mean, you never, we've had some growers that, you know, first couple of years they come and they hardly spend anything. And then all of a sudden, Oh, I just bought 30 acres. Oh, okay. Like now they're going to start spending money. So we don't really discriminate size wise. Um, time is usually pretty used up during the season. So we try our best to get out to you, but a lot of times I have growers text me pictures of stuff or, you know, draw something up and say, Hey, what does this look like? Is this the right way to do it? Did I hook that up right? Just because, you know, I'm, my territory runs from here to Oregon. So there's a lot of times where it's hard to get to one specific grower to look at something simple, at least for me. So a lot of times we usually try to either by phone, text, email, kind of look at the, an issue that you might be having or just kind of help try and get the customer to a point where, you know, they're starting to learn more and being more educated where they're self-sufficient, but it's for their betterment because when they have a problem with something, instead of going, well, I'll just wait a few days and wait for someone to come out here. Yeah. Send a service tech and we'll, you know, we'll wait four days to get it fixed. It's, Oh, I know what it is because I learned this when I asked a question and now I have it. So now I can be a little more self-sufficient. And that's when you start to see a large improvement, especially in terms of just grow, general grower attitude, as well as sometimes their production, because they're aware of, oh, this is a symptom I need to look out for. If, you know, my pressure gauges are low, my filter's plugged, instead of just ignoring it, I'm going to actually change it. Oh, now I'm watering better. So it kind of helps. It can sometimes even help increase your yields just because you're more aware of what to look out for and what to be 
you know, what to be mindful of. Um, and I, if you've got something else, just let me know. But I, the, the kind of, the, the, there's not a few, whole lot of people here anyway, so it's kind of a good chance to have a conversation about it. Because from our point of view, too, is we're trying to figure out how to have uh, some kind of network that can support smaller growers. Because it's the same thing for us. You can't apply for grants or you can't visit people nearly as much when they're small. It just isn't cost effective or resource effective. And I think you guys are on the front lines of making sure those folks are successful or not. And, and it's always a frustration. I hear from growers all the time is, ah, I'm too small. To, guy's not going to come out and visit me or whatever um but it's always also hard to integrate that into their system so it, it's it's an interesting problem is how to serve small growers efficiently and economically with what resources we got so, uh, just i i think that's the last that's almost more of a comment than a question but I, I think that's what we're struggling with right now with strawberries is how can we serve this market? How can we grow it so we're more successful and they're more successful? Yeah, I just leave you. Well, I was gonna say that really, at least for me personally, the existing people and the people that have been doing this for a long time, they've got pretty dialed in. So they don't need a ton of my time usually it would be, my time would be available for the people that are trying to get started or need help. So I'm kind of lucky in that way because I'm not out trying to maintain anything really as far as equipment or, you know, that kind of thing. So it actually is, uh, I'm available, I guess would be the end shot. It's uh, people that already have everything going, I don't need to help them too much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. The food recovery angle and yeah. having cleaners is actually the, the bottleneck of their whole operation. They learn everything else and they don't know anything. So I have one more question. Um, so based on how it relates to your company, what are the top two things that you always ask a grower or a growing company or two things that they should keep in mind before contacting you? For me, it's always... Um, the, the, and, the, and strawberry related. Of course. Right, the two, well, it's, this, is, this, is, this covers all commodities, but where, where are you taking your fruit? And, you know, what... Is, what restrictions have they given you? So there's a lot of times where, you know, people want to plant crops and they want to grow, you know, varieties, but they haven't found a market yet and they don't know where, where they're going or, um, you know, for me, it's, it's find your markets. Um, you know, what are you going to, what void are you filling? And then that helps me be able to decide, you know, what we can do because not everything. I mean, I, and and I'm and I'm dealing with mostly uh, processed strawberries as well, but um, some fresh uh, direct market stuff. Um, you know, what what are my what are our restrictions? What are your what are your buyers looking for? What you know what what have they restricted you to? Um, just just so that we can have it's hard to, it's hard to make recommendations and, and, and go through an entire timeline without understanding what the end result is going to be or where it, where it's heading so um there's just things we have to have in place before before that um before i can really do my job so uh, my two questions would be number one what's their market like where are they going to sell them are they selling them at a farmer's market are they selling into a grocery store if so, how many? And then the other question would be volume. And the volume has much less to do with price and everything to do with what would be the best recommendation for them as far as packaging goes. You know, if they're doing a lot of volume, they're going to need to move very quickly, especially on strawberries. Um, there could be things like pre-assembling boxes that would help them. Um, those kinds of things. 
And that, so those would be my two, would be where are you selling and who are you selling to? My two questions that I ask pretty much everyone, regardless of whatever crop they're growing is, how many acres are you doing and what's your water? Where's your water coming from? How much you got? It's kind of, I mean, it's a little more than two questions, but um, a lot of times growers will have, you know, for the smaller ones, it's not as bad, but if, you know, we have customers who they have 10, 15 acres and they go, yeah, I've got, you know, a small well on my property that gives me five gallons a minute. That should be enough, right? Well, how many acres are you planning? Oh, 15. It's not enough. So a lot of times we usually got to start, we usually always just start with the water, how much you have available. And then from there we can look at it and go, it might not be viable to do all 15 or you have to understand that partway through the season, you might not be able to put any more water on and your plants are going to need it, but you can't supply it. So um, that kind of allows us to either come up with a game plan in advance or at least make the grower aware that they're going to be short at some point in the season. Um, just to be aware of as well, you know, irrigation isn't cheap, but it's also not that expensive when you think of how essential it is. Um, you know, you can do, you know, a pretty budget friendly system, but you're still going to spend, you know, thousand bucks. I mean, it's hard to walk in and get a complete system for a hundred dollars. So I have some, some people kind of come in and go, Oh, I kind of thought this would be cheap. Well, it's not, cheap but you know it's it's going to be effective and it helps when you come into the store too or when you call and contact us to kind of have some sort of idea laid down on what you're doing um because i mean we can make recommendations but ultimately it's your field so if you want to do x number of rows this long versus this way we can we can help you decide that but it always helps to actually have some sort of plan in mind prior to to showing up just because there's so many options it's kind of hard to nail it down if you don't know what you want, so. Do you, do either of you two want to add to that that last comment that Jeff uh, that Jeff had? I mean, do you guys kind of see that in your own industry of you know wanting the grower to really have a pretty solid game plan, or do you prefer to help make that plan with them? I personally am one who wants to help. Um, I hope that we bring more knowledge about what they need to do than they have, which is why we're there. Um, ultimately, they make the decision, but I can give them, and an example would be degradable, compostable, that kind of issues. And at the end of the day, they make the decision, but I can, we certainly can provide them with the information to make sound decisions. So, um, but I would hope that they would rely upon us to help them in our area of expertise. Just like I don't know how to farm the strawberries, but they do. For me, for me, the only plan I need to know is if they have somewhere for their fruit. So, I mean, I, I can go, I mean, I'm basically, I'm gonna work with them hand in hand from the beginning of site prep all the way until harvest. Um, so I, they don't really need a plan, um, just just where their fruit's going to go. You know, we can we can figure everything else out. So um, that's that's basically all I need. I have one additional question, actually, that I was thinking about with this last discussion. Um, does you know the changes with food safety being you know, uh, pretty important at this point, very important at this point. Um, does it relate to, how does it relate to the things that you sell um, in, in your businesses? Food safety, I mean, in, cer in certain aspects, I mean, there's things that we sell to help help counteract that whether it's in water or or what it is but food safety it, it, you know when we're selling chemicals and and fertilizers um i mean there's just a whole set of rules that goes with all of that as well but we we help all of our growers um individually um you know 
we kind of watch for them to stay in compliance and to do things correctly because we want them to be successful. Um, you know, it's it, and, and a lot of people aren't trying to do it. They're just, they just don't know what they're, you know, they don't know all the rules all the time. Uh, you know, whether it's language barrier or it's, or it's just, uh, um, you know, being aware or having consciousness of, of like, knowing where the resources are so we're constantly working with the us usda wsda um and 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 growers compliances as well so in mediating that so uh this is what makes my job interesting um because sometimes i am the liaison between the grower and where they're selling uh, sometimes there's unrealistic expectations of the grower, shipper, packer, and I will actually intervene and go meet with the grocery store chain, the whatever, and ask them where they're coming from on a matter, whether it, you know, it could be all kinds of things, and usually come up with resolution for them. And I feel like I'm sort of a neutral party in that, um, I want my customer to be successful. I obviously, the customer's gonna be successful if the grocery store chain is successful. And I understand that they have goals, but I need to make sure that they're realistic and give them feedback. You know, we could use a clamshell as an example. You know, there's some retailers that are trying to get away from clamshells, yet from a food safety standpoint and efficiency standpoint, they're the best thing right now. And um, so I have to ask them, what's your motivation? What, why do you think this? Have you thought about the various things, you know, food safety, shelf life, all of those things, and then come to some sort of conclusion? Um, to some degree, it plays in. I know some growers are using plastic mulch to get the fruit off the dirt. Um, I mean, there's other benefits as well, but there are some products that people are using to kind of help get that crop up just off of the bare ground. Um, with drip being typically used in strawberries, it's usually not such an issue putting water on the fruit. But, you know, for people who do do overhead, there's always that concern that depending on your water source, you know, is there any, you know, E. coli in the water? Or if you're even allowed to do that, a lot of um, processors aren't taking surface water um, fruit that's getting water on it from the surface so it's kind of it can it can play a factor in it it's not necessarily something we directly deal with but it can our what we're doing can indirectly affect food safety with you know if they are doing a bunch of overhead sprinklers yeah it's something to consider but you know if that's working for them okay but if they're pulling out of a pond with a bunch of scum floating on the top of it probably not a good idea um, and we make recommendations based on that. But yeah, so there's a few aspects that it plays into. Okay, any last questions for the panel? I really uh, wanna thank you guys. This was great. Um, let me give them a round of applause. So I'm just, uh, you guys are able to sit down. That's cool. Great um, I just wanted to thank you guys all. Um, we're cutting it a little bit short. We were obviously planning on having a survey at this time, but you guys get to uh, leave a bit early because we bumped it up. Um, again, I did want to thank NorCal Nursery. Oh, it's not up there anymore. NorCal Nursery for, again, um, sponsoring the session and also the, uh, you know, recognizing the WSDA specialty crop block grant that um, helped um, get this workshop kind of coordinated and, and moved along um, and gives us a good perspective on, on where we, uh, as you know, the, the research side of the industry, need to be kind of concentrating on things. So yeah, I mean, I think, I think we should be good. Thank you guys all for coming.